beautiful spring day on the campus of Columbia University. The kind of day when it's hard to go inside. But I hurried along. I didn't want to be late for one of my classes in social studies. Some days before, our professor had given us a list of possible subjects for our term papers. Today, we were to report on the subjects we had chosen. Each of us was to make a first-hand study of social conditions in a specific community. First-hand, because as our professor had expressed it, life itself is the best textbook. When my turn came, I told the class the subject I'd selected, how social welfare problems are handled in a nearby community called Yonkers, New York. The professor suggested that in my research at Yonkers, I might get help from the city's community chest. Then he wished me an interesting trip. Yonkers wasn't very far from the university, but it was a change of scene, and at first I looked around like any curious stranger. Then I remembered that I'd have to look much more carefully in terms of the city's social conditions. Before I began, I checked in at the local YMCA for an overnight stay. Then I was ready to start. First, what were the economic resources of the city? I started out to survey the industrial areas. Yonkers looked like a semi-industrial city where large factories provide much of the basic employment. The largest factory in town builds elevators. Another big plant makes carpets and still another manufactures sugar syrup. These factories employ thousands of men and women workers. The wages these people earn help to support the grocers, the clothing and shoe stores, the restaurants and other businesses in the town. It's upon these citizens the community's resources in manpower and wealth depends. Citizens who can keep well, abide by the laws, support themselves and their families. Next, where and how did these people live? In one residential district of the many roomed houses built years ago when families were larger. Most of the people today live in modest apartment houses. Some live in more dilapidated buildings. The people who live here are part of the city's busy life. Yet I could see that many had problems too great to solve alone. Poverty. Juvenile delinquency illness, and old age. From my social studies, I knew that the whole of any community suffers in proportion to the extent of the misery and unhappiness of its individual members. I kept wondering, how much was the community aware of its human problems? Was it taking practical steps to do something about them? The next step was to call the headquarters of the community chest. Perhaps there I could find the answers to my questions. The executive director said to come right over.
The director was very helpful. He told me Yonkers was one of 1,250 American cities which has the community chest, a central fundraising and administrative organization. The Yonkers community chest consists of 17 member welfare agencies. Then the director made a surprising statement, surprising to me anyway. My idea of social welfare had been helping people already in difficulties, psychological, physical, economic, all kinds of difficulties. He said that most of the agencies of the chest aimed at prevention as well as cure. In fact, prevention came first. He told me about certain welfare agencies which stress prevention of social ills through long-range training and education. Among these are the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts, the YMCA, the YWCA, the Women's Institute. Also included are the community centers sponsored by neighborhood groups to provide a safe, healthy play atmosphere for adolescents. Preventive measures against the sources of human difficulty are wise. Prevention saves money, time, and effort otherwise required for rehabilitation and cure. Then there are the other agencies equipped to give quick help to those in trouble, like the Visiting Nursing Association, the Family Service Society, the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children and the General Hospital. In a two-day visit, I couldn't study all of these member agencies of the community chest. The director advised that I examine an agency that worked with personal or family problems, such as the Family Service Society, an agency that dealt with illness and disease like the Visiting Nursing Association, and an agency that promoted group activities like the YMCA and the Boy Scouts. He said that my first visit might be to the Family Service Society and he called them for an appointment. Now I would see for myself exactly what some of these agencies are doing for the people. The Family Service Society, the counselor in charge, said I'd arrived in time to see three people off to a fuller life. A childless husband and wife had come to receive the custody of a baby girl they were adopting. To be sure the baby was normal and healthy enough to enter their lives, she had been given a number of tests of her mental and physical health over a period of months. Today was the final checkup. The couple had waited long for this happy day. And the baby, well, she couldn't say much, but I think she was happy too. At least I felt she had a good chance for happiness when the counselor told me how carefully these parents had been selected. Orphaned and given up by relatives who were unable to rear it properly, the baby had previously been in a foundling home, just like many other babies. But not all such orphan children are adoptable. They may have a relative or even a parent who expects to take them someday. Or there may be serious mental or physical reasons why they cannot be adopted. That's why so many little ones remain in hospitals and institutions. That's why there are so many would-be parents for every adoptable baby. And that's why the counselors can choose much more carefully among parents who are right for the child. Consider this new family of three just starting out life together. The baby was healthy and adoptable, and her future parents had waited patiently nearly two years for her to be found. 
they had met all their tests, too. They weren't wealthy, but they could provide the baby with comfortable surroundings. They were a congenial couple, and a calm home would give the child a feeling of security. They could assure the child of a good cultural and moral background. An added factor was the baby's features. They were very much like the foster mothers. This would later make the little girl feel she truly belonged to her adopted parents. Only after a probationary period of many months would the final adoption papers be signed. But there was every reason to believe this case would then be marked closed. Now I was to find out how the community takes care of its sick through the Visiting Nursing Association. One of the nurses took me along on a home visit. In cars furnished by the agency, calls can be made on the bedridden sick who would otherwise depend on the unskilled care of friends or relatives. Mother of the family knew the nurse was coming. She was eager to learn how to care for her injured husband, who had been brought home from the hospital the day before. There was much to be done, and the nurse set about her job efficiently. After seeing that her patient was not in pain or great discomfort, the nurse gave the young wife her first lesson in how to care for the patient herself. The nurse would come again and again to change the dressings, bathe the patient, and teach the mother family health until there was no longer need for her visits. And while the nurse was here, Mother asked her to examine the little girl's sore throat. If neglected, a sore throat might mean a trip to the hospital. But today, a simple treatment was all that was necessary. In cases where the family can pay something toward the visiting nurse's services, they do. But whether they can pay or not, all receive the same competent, helpful treatment. It was late in the day by then, and I went back to the YMCA. The Y is one of the group agencies partially supported by the community chest. How did it operate as a center for young people's activities? Well, the director told me that the Y was providing healthful recreation facilities for more than 6,000 youngsters and young men. The completely equipped gymnasium is in constant use day and night. The swimming pool provides year-round water sports for youngsters. The YMCA staff gives regular courses in swimming instruction and water safety. But physical recreation is not the sole aim of the Y. There's a large free library kept fully stocked with books for the young. Groups of boys meet to discuss topics ranging from the problems of youth to current events. Outside lecturers, leaders in their field, find receptive audiences. Now came an opportunity to see the work of another community chest agency. I met Jimmy, one of the local Boy Scouts. Jimmy invited me to a scout troop meeting. Jimmy's troop meets weekly in the basement of his neighborhood church. Like Boy Scouts all over the world, they learn to observe the principles of good conduct. This study is combined with the fun of Scout craft and healthy recreation. 
I noticed my young friend Jimmy was adept at scout techniques like artificial respiration. He also seemed popular with the other scouts. I was surprised to learn that just a few months ago, Jimmy had been a very different boy. Born in the slum district, he'd grown into a bully living by the code of the streets. One day he heard about the regular boxing matches put on in the church basement. He didn't know how to fight according to rules, but he did like to fight. The next time the boxing matches were held, Jimmy volunteered rather condescendingly. He wanted to show off what he considered his uh, superior technique. Jimmy found it hard to take defeat. He discovered that the other boy had learned how to box at summer camp with the Boy Scouts. His new friend offered to bring him to the next scout meeting and introduce him to the boys. After a trial visit, Jimmy joined the scouts. He found that he could get the feeling of accomplishment without hitting out at people. No longer does Jimmy play in the streets or fight in the alleys. Scouting has taught him to earn his honors and his leadership. Well, my assignment was almost finished. I'd seen various agencies of the community chest at work. I was impressed both by what they did and the way they did it. I knew that it takes money for these agencies to operate. Money for buildings. Money for equipment and supplies. Money for salaries of trained workers. Money for all the member agencies of the chest, given to them according to their needs. Where does this money come from? I revisited the director of the community chest to thank him for the cooperation he had arranged and to get the answer to the question of community chest funds. He began to tell me how the money was raised. Most of it through a yearly drive for the community chest by volunteer workers. Such a drive relieves each individual agency from spending the time, money, and effort to raise its own funds and permits the agencies to concentrate on their work. The funds come from the businessmen of the city. from the school children who willingly give their pennies and nickels and dimes, from the housewives, from every class and group and section of this community. One overall contribution pledged once a year to the community chest supports partly or altogether each of its 17 different welfare agencies. The people of Yonkers get behind their community chest and contribute generously. Some because of an unselfish love of their fellow man. And some because they know the misfortune of the man next door or down the street, misfortune against which he may not be prepared, is a blow against the whole community. When families become psychologically and economically insecure, the whole community ultimately suffers. Everywhere I had gone, I'd seen how this American community takes care of its own an average community of industrious, self-reliant people. They have the same basic needs as people anywhere in the world. They want adequate food, shelter, clothing, good health, and freedom from fear. They have found that one way to meet these needs is through their support of the community chest. It isn't charity. It's a sound investment in the future of the community. I'd seen a group of human beings working together and together sharing the responsibilities which safeguard the welfare of the individual and the community. I was ready to go back to the university 
and write my report. 